is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to this channel i am gold pony as a new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we're in the brand new 2024 chevy Trax, courtesy of apple chevrolet in york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so we are in this one today because this is all new for 2024 new tech new features it looks good i love the color we are driving right now believe it or not and there's one thing i bet you guys would never guess about the new 2024 tracks and i'll be touching on that a little bit later on but ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so there will be several different trim levels for the 2024 tracks first one being the ls starting at twenty one thousand four hundred ninety five dollars one rs which is the one we are in today starting at twenty three thousand one ninety five lt for twenty three three ninety five two rs for twenty four thousand nine hundred ninety five dollars and lastly the active starting at twenty four thousand nine ninety five but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant on the new tracks is going to be the same powering the beast is a 1.2 liter turbocharged three cylinder putting out 137 horsepower at 5,000 rpm 162 pound feet of torque coming in at 2,500 rpm that power being sent to the front wheels through a six speed automatic zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 8.8 .8 seconds and we'll give that a shot a little bit later in the video but mpg numbers then coming in at 28 in the city 32 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel but so now having got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and get to that acceleration test here let's put the tracks to the test and let's see how quick the new turbocharged three cylinder here can get us up to speed all right you guys i found our straightaway in three two one go turbo like now we're going <laughs> that's not bad honestly that is not bad i thought it was going to be a heck of a lot slower so I guess that's why they turbocharged a three cylinder instead of going with a naturally aspirated four cylinder, that and MPGs obviously. So there was a decent acceleration for what this vehicle is. Obviously it's not gonna compete with a BMW M or something like that, but it's it's a decent acceleration. You're not gonna have any issues emerging onto the highway. Now I will say one thing that is 100% different than any other hundreds of vehicles that I have ever tested is the actual gas pedal itself. It is probably the softest gas pedal feel i guess you could say that i've ever experienced it's just so loosey goosey i know i'm probably not explaining it right but if you guys actually go and drive the tracks you'll know what i'm saying it's not a bad thing it's just different it's not it's nothing that i've ever been used to it feels like nothing else it feels like no other vehicles that i've ever driven so did want to mention that but like i said acceleration is perfectly fine you're not going to have any issues there but anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important so as expected four wheel ventilated disc brakes do come standard as far as that braking feel goes that is brilliant they 100 got the braking feel right and the brake pedal right it is definitely on the firmer side of things that is not a soft braking feel it feels like the 60 to zero number would be pretty darn good nothing's been tested yet of course yet but still i love the braking on the new tracks i will say that but anyways then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back compound crank rear suspension as far as ride quality goes it's been perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today i've had no problems there so 100 percent perfectly fine as far as steering feel goes i actually like it I, this one of the things i kind of muttered to myself when i was just driving not on camera back there is it does tend to lean a little bit on the heavier side of things now it's nothing crazy but it feels good here in the tracks as far as the steering feel goes not only that we have a flat bottom steering wheel and it's finished in perforated leather as well so it is rather sporty when it comes to the whole steering ensemble together so i like that as far as cabin noise goes you do tend to hear a little bit more of the road at least at higher speed so i will say that as expected in a vehicle like this at this price range so and honestly it doesn't bother me personally so no issues there but then taking a look at visibility now because of its shape, it's not gonna be the very best if you were maybe comparing it to a Kia Soul or a, a Hyundai Venue or something like that, but I would imagine it would be something that you would get used to. Just like, I don't know, Camaro owners say they get used to the rear visibility in that, which really isn't all that great. But anyways, for the rear visibility, it's fine. It's not as good as some of the competition, I'll put it that way, but anyways, that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 
Chevy Trax. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Chevy Trax finished in nitro yellow metallic. In case you were curious of our exact exterior color name, I personally love the color. I think it looks steak and coal. It looks like nothing else on the road, which is why I probably like it. But again, all new for 2024. Design inspiration comes from the Blazer, of course. It's 11 inches longer than the previous generation, two inches wider and six inch longer wheelbase than the previous tracks as well. So it's definitely larger, it's definitely bigger. So that is definitely contributing to a lot of the better looks in my personal opinion as well. But like I said at the beginning of the video, you guys, there's something about the tracks that I bet you had no idea of about and now I'm going to tell you what that is. Let's go ahead and take a look at where this one is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the letter K, indicating that the Chevy Trax is built and assembled in South Korea. That is what I would not have guessed. So typically with Chevy, they're either made in Mexico or the US, but South Korea, the Trax is out there hanging out with Hyundai and Kia right now. So I don't know, I just thought that was very, very interesting. But as always, let's go ahead and start up front on this one here. LED headlights with LED daytime running lights do come standard on every single trim level across the board, but also coming standard automatic headlights, meaning when it starts to get dark at night, the headlights will turn on automatically for you there. But not only that, Automatic high beams also coming standard for all trims. So my wife loves that. Essentially what that is, is when you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. Then when that vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically then bounce it back up to high beams. So very convenient feature there. And in case anybody was curious, as far as the headlight setup goes, daytime running lights and turn signals are gonna be on top. And then the headlights, of course, are down below. So again, kind of the Kia and Hyundai look as expected, since this one is made in Korea, I guess. But I like the look of that, I think it looks good. And of course you got the RS red badging found on the front grille since we have the one RS trim level with us here today. And as far as that bow tie logo goes, it's essentially gonna be a gold bow tie logo for the LS and LT trims. And then a black bow tie logo like you're looking at right now for the RS trims and also the active. So that's how that's gonna work out for you. But again, very nice looking redesign, very aggressive looking up front. I love it. Let me know what you guys think of it in the comment section below, but that about rounds out the front end. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. And so but now since we are around to the side of the tracks, roof rails coming with the LT trim level end up, rear privacy glass coming standard across the board. I love that, that definitely looks good. Power adjustable side mirrors for all trim levels across the board. Heated side mirrors though, coming with the RS trims and the active trim level. We'll get a gloss black finish for the RS trims and the active as well. Matte black finish for the LS and then a body colored finish for the LT. So the side mirrors are gonna differentiate pretty substantially based on the trim level. But anyways, as far as that wheel design goes, 17 inch steel wheels with covers for the LS, 18 inch black painted aluminum alloys for the One RS and active, 17 inch gray painted aluminum alloys for the LT, and then 19 inch black painted aluminum alloys for the two RS. But as we move our way to the back here, one thing I think is so stinking cool, if you take a look at the side profile of those rear taillights, it looks a heck of a lot like Lexus design. So I'm just gonna say that right now and let's go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of this one, you guys could see that matte black antenna all the way to the top, just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper. Again, with the bow tie badging, I already told you how it worked up front. It's obviously gonna mirror that in the back. Got the tracks badging, you got some trim level badging. As far as those tail lights go, they are halogen bulbs. So that is what you guys are looking at as well. And then just underneath of it all, you will find a single exhaust outlet tucked away underneath, kind of on the driver's side back there. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. And so but now since we are around to the back of the tracks, so when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is gonna be a manual tailgate for all trim levels across the board, but there is a rubberized button. You simply press in on that and then go ahead and lift it open. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 25.6 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do a full down, bumping that up to 54.1 cubic feet then. There is some cargo lighting back there. There's actually tie-down anchors as well. There's a cargo cover 
if you go with the LT trim level and up, then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you are going to find a spare tire as opposed to the fix a flat. But so then making our way up to the rear leg room, this is actually quite impressive and it makes sense because this thing has been elongated a little bit. So rear leg room actually comes in at a pretty impressive 38.7 inches. So for reference, I'm mean even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. There's no rear center armrest. There's no charging ports and there's actually no rear ventilation as well. But what they do have is a little bit of storage where you traditionally might find that rear ventilation. And overall, I was just impressed enough that I was actually able to fit. But anyways, then making our way up to the front seats, cloth seating coming with the LS and 1RS trim levels, cloth Evo text combination coming with the LT, Evo text upholstery coming with the 2RS and active trim levels, manually adjustable front seats coming with all trim levels, but the active, because the active is going to give you an eight way power driver's seat. Then if you wanted heated front seats, simply go with the RS trims or the active and they're going to be located kind of right around the climate control settings there so although we have cloth seats we still got the heated seats and quite honestly they were perfectly comfortable uh, so definitely not having any issues there even though they're manually adjustable I personally didn't have any issues at least but then taking a look at the steering wheel one of my favorite parts of the uh, tracks here it is tilt and telescoping and it will be leather wrapped for the active flat bottom for the RS trim levels and then heated for the RS trims and the active as well. That's what really surprised me. So even in our one RS, it goes for right around $23,000, we have a heated steering wheel. How often do you see that? You don't see that. That's like a luxury $50,000 and up kind of feature. So huge fan of that. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. And let me start by showing you guys the key here. You got your bow tie logo on the one side. When you flip it over, lock, unlock. The circular button is actually gonna be your remote start, which by the way, comes on all trim levels, but the LS, that one doesn't get it. But anyways, it is all keyless entry though. So all I'm going to do in our RS is simply put my foot on the brake and turn the key. And so, but then once started up, this gauge cluster's all right, but it actually gets better. So for us, tachometer's on your left, speedometer's on your right, small digital display front and center gives you digital speed, how many miles you have left until you hit empty, the basics basically. But if you were to go with that one LT trim level and up, you're gonna get a full eight inch digital gauge cluster. So that would be the one I would personally prefer. I love digital gauges, they're more customizable, but Today, we don't have it. And this was actually specific to the RS. I like the RS badging and the tachometer, but anyways, that's what that looks like. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. There is a power sunroof that is gonna be optional on the one RS trim level and up. We have that option. It's not the biggest sunroof, but I like it. Let's in more light here. Automatic climate control coming with the LT trim level and up. That's something we don't have as well. Honestly, I kind of like how everything is tilted towards the driver. It's like Nissan GTR-ish with the infotainment screen and the uh, air vents here. It's kind of tilted towards the driver like, like a sports car would be. So I thought that was pretty cool. Just in front of the shifter, you have a little bit of storage, 12 volt power outlet, couple charging ports there. To the right of the shifter, you have a cell phone slot, couple cup holders there, electric mechanical parking brake, little more storage behind there. And within the center armrest, actually a decent amount of storage. A lot of times in vehicles of this size, you don't have all that much storage in that center armrest but that's actually decent here and i kind of like the little diamond or square texturized pattern found on the doors as well i like the red accents around the air vents on the corners here because we have the rs trim level i thought that was a nice touch as well overall there are a decent amount of hard plastics but for the most part, the uniqueness that everything tilted towards the driver, I think it kind of makes up for it. So I don't mind the interior quality on this thing. But so now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen. You're gonna find an eight inch color touchscreen display for the LS and one RS trim levels, and then an 11 inch color touchscreen display for the LT trim level and up. So you are of course looking at the eight inch screen, but either way you get Bluetooth and audio streaming, Either way, get ready for this, wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay for all trim levels. Yes, that is amazing. It means you don't have to hook up your phone. It's still gonna recognize it and give it Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, so love that. And overall, everything was pretty crisp, just like your smartphone would be. It moved pretty quickly. There wasn't any delays or anything like that. I like it had the outside temperature up there as well, time of the day, things like that. And of course, you can check out your radio information. So when it comes to the sound systems, there's gonna be two of them. So for the LS and one RS trims that we have today, you're going to get a four speaker sound system. We'll test that out in a second, but six speaker
speakers then coming for the LT trim level and up. So like I said, let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out our four speaker sound system that we have with us here today. Girls just wanna have fun. Have fun if you don't have fun. Girls just wanna have fun. It's actually not that bad. Not as bad as I thought it was going to be. This decent amount of bass. I'll say that to start. More bass than I expected. Clarity is all right. Honestly, this isn't that big of a vehicle, although it did get larger, but it's still not that big of a vehicle. So four speakers isn't horrible for it. Six speakers is obviously going to be better, but that wasn't a horrible four speaker sound system. It might have been the best four speaker sound system that I've heard in my uh, 700 plus reviews or whatever. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen is when you do put the tracks in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, letting you know what is behind you, which as always is going to lead us into safety. So first, let me start by saying this thing has not yet been rated by IIHS. So keep an eye out for that in the future. But front side side current airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors to tethers to children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, a following distance indicator, forward collision alert, lane keep assist, lane departure warning, a teen driver mode, which prevents uh, your teen driver from turning off any of the safety features. And if they do, it actually logs it in the system so then you can see that. So that's kind of interesting. But I did want to mention there is a driver confidence package that we actually have today. And that goes for $250, but that gives you rear cross traffic alert and lane change alert with side blind zone alert as well. So it's going to be the little car icon in your side mirror is letting you know if somebody's in your blind spot. So I do like that. Anyways, overall, when it comes to my final thoughts, the new style on this thing is absolutely wonderful. I think the exterior styling is great. Somebody gets a raise at Chevy for that. I think they did a good job, but more space than the previous generation, especially when it comes to that rear legroom. I love that as well. Excellent pricing on this thing. The one RS that we have today right now, it's right around $23,000. That is not that bad. It is very hard to find a car, a new car for $23,000 these days. So I like that. I would have loved to have seen the 11 inch infotainment screen as well and the digital gauges. We don't have that in our one RS, but I think that is cool that they offer that still at a reasonable price point. As far as the room for improvement goes, I know it's front wheel drive only, but and I know it competes with the Hyundai Venue and the Kia Soul, which are also front wheel drive only, but I still wouldn't have minded maybe an all wheel drive option in this thing. But I know it's not competing with all wheel drive SUVs. I get that, but it would have been kind of cool to see it. Also, the only other thing I can think of that would kind of put up a, a, a yellow flag for me, not a red flag, but a yellow flag would be, uh, I would question the reliability. So many vehicles right now are going turbocharged three cylinder, like the new Nissan Rogue, I could just think of off the top of my head as well. And uh, I don't know what the long-term reliability of that would be. Obviously not as good as a naturally aspirated counterpart, but it might still be decent. I don't know. I guess time will tell. That's something I would keep in the back of my mind as well. But anyways, let me know what you guys think in the new tracks in the comments section below. I do read your comments, but that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen. If you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews, because that is what we do here on this channel after all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.